You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. Oh no! Uh oh, we got a tortoise flipped over. And let's help him out. Ah, oh, there you go, Edgar. What are you doing, man? Sometimes these tortoises get flipped over, and guess what? That is the topic of today's Ask Cam Cannon question. Now, Edgar must have been breeding somebody. You can see he was trying to get up as there's some marks in the ground. Now, every now and again, tortoises will get flipped over and people ask me all the time, oh no, what do I do to prevent this? And today's question comes from Norm Went, and he says that he has tortoises that are flipping over all the time. And he wants to know, are they suffocating and how long can they stay like that? So that's a great question, Norm. Uh, as you saw, Edgar was upside down. I don't know how long he was upside down for, but uh, the thing of it is, is why people worry is because if you look at a tortoise and you look at the anatomy of a tortoise, if you were able to see the inside, the lungs are actually up uh, across the back of the plastron, excuse me, the carapace here. Woo, forgetting my top from bottom. So they're, they're actually on the inside of the carapace, which is the upper portion. So when a tortoise is upside down, all of his intestines and internal organs are then resting on his lungs. And as we know, Tortoises don't have a diaphragm. Uh, diaphragm is what helps most animals pull, uh, pull air into their lungs and then helps force the air out of their lungs, and that's how we breathe. Now, tortoises uh, have to kind of move a bit to breathe. It helps them breathe. Just the act of walking helps these guys breathe. Now, they also, being reptiles, don't have to breathe as much as warm-blooded animals. So they breathe slower, they use more oxygen in their lungs, and they're able to go a longer time without breathing, which is why sometimes we found tortoises at the bottom of the pool. Uh, uh, some people have called me up and said, oh my God, I found my tortoise at the bottom of a pool, and I was able to resuscitate him by getting the air, uh, the water out of his lungs. Here's a female. Uh, we're going to go for a walk as we continue to talk about this particular question. So tortoises sometimes can be revived even after they've been underwater for about an hour, which is incredible. They are really, really amazing animals. But back to being flipped over. The problem with being flipped over depends where it happens. If they flip over in a hot sun, direct sun, or if they flip over underneath one of those really powerful heat lamps that we use to keep them indoors, well, then you could have a problem because their body temperature will rise and it will rise quickly. And once that happens, the animal essentially cooks underneath the light. So that's where you got to worry about them flipping over. Now, they can suffocate, but it would take an extremely long time, and it would also be kind of a bummer. Uh, I would hate to see that happen to any tortoise. Uh, we're now in with Nostradamus. What's up, Nostradamus? How you doing, pal? Here's Nostradamus. I rarely ever find these tortoises flipped over. I've actually never found any of my Galops or Aldabra flipped over here. Socrates? Hey, Socks, what's happening? And then, of course, the big girl, Darwin. And Darwin is an incredible tortoise. She's a Galapagos tortoise. And one of the things I've learned having these large tortoises is sometimes I've had to flip them over. And I've had to flip them over to take blood or to do some kind of injections. Uh, I even had to give this tortoise an enema, which was not fun for me or for her. But anyhow, when you flip over a large tortoise like this, the suffocation risk can become a little bit more severe because they're heavier animals and they have heavier internal organs. So you got to watch out for that. And the other thing is when you flip them over, you flip them over and then make sure you flip them back the same way you flip them over. You don't complete a roll. If you do that, it's possible you can give them a torsion in their intestines. Now a torsion is basically kind of how it sounds like a tourniquet. It's actually creating a blockage. It's twisting the organ. It's twisting the um, digestive tract and it won't allow anything to pass. So it's very important that you flip them back over the same way uh, that they went under, that they rolled over. Look at this guy. Wow, she's beautiful, huh? What a girl. She's being such a good girl today. So you want to be careful with that. Now that's only for the extremely large tortoises like this here, Galop, uh, and maybe Aldabras and Sulcatas. I'd watch out for that. So it's very important to know 
their physiology, which is why you guys are all here and why you're asking the question, right, Norm? All right, it's very, very cool. So let's continue walking along and we'll finish this question up. But man, I'm having kind of fun just scratching Darwin's face here. Oh, I love you. Usually she's more shy than this, but she must be in a really good mood today. Right, hon? Oh, I love her. What a gal. All right, I, oh, well, hey, I guess it's time for me to go. I'm getting bumped by socks. Gosh, socks. Kind of a jerk. All right, there's Darwin. Uh, there's Nostradamus. Now, Nostradamus is always ready for a little scratch, even raises on up there on all fours just to really enjoy it. Oh, I love you too, pal. Oh, they're so awesome, aren't they? Okay, so we are continuing to answer the question of flipped tortoises. Now, how do I keep my tortoise from flipping? Now, baby tortoises, them little suckers flip all the time. Uh, if you think about it, they're kind of gangly and just getting used to life and they're figuring their little bodies out uh, much like a small human being so you got to give them a little time to start to understand how to completely work those bodies so what i do is i make sure that any furniture in there can allow them to flip up now sharp corners if they wedge into it they'll try and climb up and fall over most of the time these guys can right themselves um so you know that's okay but in other times they can't uh, it would take a long time for a little baby tortoise to suffocate uh, like that, so I wouldn't worry too much. It, again, comes down to the fact that the tortoise, uh, if it's underneath some kind of heat source, that's a problem, or over a heating pad, that'd be a problem. Now, those sharp corners, you may want to round them out. This keeps tortoises from bunching up in those corners, and it keeps them from flipping and climbing all over each other. Uh, how about a big old red foot? This particular red foot yesterday if you look, was flipped over. And you see all these markings here? This was him trying to dig in to get himself righted. Now, I came about. And one of the things uh, that you'll notice sometimes, if it's been a really long time that the animal's been flipped over, if you look, when they're flipped over, sometimes they'll poop on themselves. You'll see feces on their bellies. And why that happens is because they're trying to relieve some of the pressure on those internal organs. So if they lighten the intestines up, they're not going to be weighing down the lungs as much. Uh, that is actually almost a last resort, guys. So you know the tortoise has been upside down for quite a long time if you see feces on their plastron. So you got to get them righted. Very important. But that is after a very long time. Luckily, this guy uh, was okay. I was able to get to him. It's not been too hot. He wasn't in direct sun. And if you look at how my enclosures are built, uh, there's really not a lot that they can climb up on. They uh, basically walk about. There is some elevation changes, but they're gradual and they're not a way that can really hurt the guys at all. Now, another way tortoises will flip over, much like uh, what started this video with the radiated tortoise, Edgar, is sometimes when they breed each other, they will accidentally get rammed or not accidentally they might get intentionally rammed by another tortoise or they may get so excited about breeding that they knock themselves off their feet so to speak now some turtles when you see them copulate like the north american box turtle well the male will just completely rest on his back while he's breeding the female now that's normal and those tortoises have a higher dome that allows them to kind of get not tortoises they're turtles those turtles have a higher dome which allows them to kind of right themselves and some turtles can right themselves much more easily than others sulcata tortoise not one of those those guys kind of have a difficult time once they're flipped over and as you know sulcata tortoises these guys like lumpy here they will combat each other and that's one of the ways that some tortoises get flipped over now in combat it is uh, basically a fight to the death if one gets wrestled over uh, and left on his back he will most certainly die because no one's gonna come help him out now there was a video circulating on the internet a while ago where people thought that the tortoises were helping each other out uh, there was one tortoise that got flipped over and the other one came back and pushed him on his right side And that was actually just the continuation of the fight uh, So sulcatas, it was two sulcata tortoises and you can see these ghoulers projections right here on good old lumpy He's got some massive ghoulers. Look at that. How precious is that? Huh? Battering rams Incredible. So what happened was this other tortoise flipped over and people said, oh, look, the friend came and helped him out. Nah, not quite. He was just trying to continue to fight, but he inadvertently righted the tortoise and that tortoise took off. So you got to watch out for that. 
Uh, let's see, I'm wondering, you're kind of getting an impromptu tour. There's uh, Brutus, the other male in here. There he is, way out there. Uh, let's go up to the leopards, because I'm going to show you something interesting about them. Uh, an adaptation that helps them out. Now, leopard tortoises and star tortoises sometimes have a natural pyramiding. They already have really nice domed shells. They live in flat, dry areas of uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and India and Pakistan, star tortoises that is. And you'll notice the leopard tortoises have this really nice shell and it's quite high domed. You can see the high doming. Now don't worry guys, it's just for scientific purposes, but if this tortoise was flipped over, look at how it rests. It doesn't rest completely flat. It wouldn't take much movement for this animal to right itself. So that's a really good adaptation. You can see that sometimes pyramiding can help out. Now, like I said, there's somewhat of a natural pyramiding that can happen in some of these tortoises. And uh, you know, the, the leopards here, they're probably my most pyramided animals, but they are so happy and healthy here. And I think that this kind of pyramiding actually helps them when they are living in the flat grasslands of Africa. And it also, another theory is that when an elephant or a rhino were to step down. If he felt this, he'd probably lift his foot off. He wouldn't smash the beautiful little tortoise that's just hiding in the grass. Uh, so there's another theory as to why these animals have such a high dome, as do the Indian star tortoise, because we know there are elephants there as well. And they're even smaller than the leopard tortoises. So there is the question of what to do about flipped tortoises. So in closing, or what do they call that? Uh, summing up what we've discussed, Make sure that they're flipped back over as quickly as possible if you have a heat source or if they're in direct sunlight. Also, you wanna make sure that the furniture in your enclosure is not conducive to flipping over. Uh, and then finally, uh, just know their physiology and understand that they will not suffocate immediately. It'll take a little while. They'll overheat way quicker than that. All right, everybody, I am Kenan. I am happy to be helping y'all out here. I'm kind of stumbling. It's all right now. Uh, we got a lot going on soon. We got the pond guys coming. Uh, we got streams going in. We've got all kinds of things happening. And you can see that's why there's no grass here. I'm not going to plant until after that's all built. But if you guys like the videos and want to help out uh, so that we can continue to bring you these videos and educate everybody on the ways of reptiles and amphibians, well, mostly reptiles, but we'll get to some amphibians soon, you might want to go to patreon.com slash Please join us over there. If you give us a buck, we're happy. Uh, it doesn't take much to keep these videos going. We really would love to see you over there and we'll answer your questions when you submit them on patreon.com and we'll answer them right here on the main channel. Don't forget, Sunday's a bonus video, Tuesdays are the regular video, and every Thursday I go live to answer questions and shout outs and have a good old time. All right, everyone, I am Ken and I am gone, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and join me on Instagram. Really help me out there, folks. I'm trying to get that Instagram to 100 grand. We're almost to 50K right now. Can you guys help me out? Help get me to 100,000 followers on Instagram. All right, everyone, thank you so much. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.